politicians and union members also, they were always advising us to establish a works council. They were saying that, okay, what case strikes are not legal, you need to establish a workers council. Uh, and we were on the way to establish a workers council. And at that point, we really needed the unions. It was not as practical as wildcat strikes, I can say. I remember the first time I rode a bike with my hand, I was uh, getting some support from the wall and on the other hand my mom was supporting me so I was trying to cycle a bit. I used to play on the street a lot. I was raised in a small city in the eastern Turkey. My father used to be a truck driver so he was mostly you know, on the roads. He was going to countries like Iraq, Azerbaijan. My mom is a housewife. My family was neither rich nor poor. So I studied at Boğaziçi University in Turkey. It's a prestigious university. And then after studying at Boğaziçi University, I moved here to study my master's. I'm Zeynep, I'm 25 years old, and I study my master's here, focusing on linguistics. And I moved to Germany from Turkey about two and a half years ago. Germany is a very nice option for a student because it is not very expensive and also especially in Berlin you don't have to speak German a lot. I mean that was my thought before I moved here <laughs> because I was thinking that okay I can just find a job. I remember I was applying to like 30 jobs a day maybe for about three months and I was either getting rejection or nothing at all and when I was getting rejected it was mostly because I don't speak German so at the end I was kind of hopeless so I applied to everywhere I applied to gorillas and you know when you apply to these kind of jobs you need to write a motivation letter you need to pass some IQ test and in my motivation letter to gorillas I had mentioned that I'm a student in Germany so I need to finance my studies, etc. But then I got rejected. So I wrote another motivation letter. And then I said, cycling is my passion, which was not. And I said, it is very cool that, you know, you can have fun and then you can earn money, etc. And then I got accepted. <laughs> the common point of the workers at Gorillas was that we don't speak German. It was not that, you know, we were not intellectuals, etc. For example, as I mentioned before, I'm a master's student, there were PhD students, there were doctors, lawyers. But without German skills, we were not able to find a job according to our ex uh, expertise in Germany. So we had to work there. They offer precarious working conditions, or I can say they offer jobs that Europeans don't want to work in. <laughs> Gorilla is a delivery company, so their motto is to deliver the groceries in 10 minutes. And especially as they opened during COVID, uh, the profile of the workers were mostly students or people who were unemployed because of COVID. And there were a lot of warehouses in the city. The warehouses are very small and in each warehouse, there's like a table, so if an order is ready, if an order is prepared by the pickers, they just put the orders on the table and those orders have a barcode. So we as the riders had an application on our phones, so we were scanning the barcode so that we knew about the address of the customer, etc. And then we were putting those we were taking those bags and putting them in our backpacks. And then we were taking the Padillacs. These are kind of e-bikes that are provided from the company. They are generally parked in front of the warehouse. And then we were just carrying the backpacks on our backs because those bicycles, those bikes did, uh, did not have any basket for us to put them. 
And also, you know, the beer bottles can shake a lot if they're in a basket, but if you carry them on your back, then your body becomes a protection for a beer bottle. And then we were cycling, we were delivering the order. Uh, and then we're just going back to the warehouse and then waiting for the waiting for another order, actually. We had to have our own mobile phones, own jackets, and no own shoes. I remember wearing multiple layers of jackets or multiple uh, leggings so that, you know, I could protect myself from the uh, winter of Berlin somehow. We were all sharing the same helmets, actually. There was just a spray. We were somehow cleaning or disinfecting the helmets and then we were just wearing them. And they were giving us some rain gears that is disgusting, I can say, because you know, everybody uses them and they are mostly dirty. The bicycles were mostly problematic. I mean, during the protest, we were always complaining about those bicycles because the brake, the brakes were not functioning properly. There were some pedal brakes. And sometimes while we were cycling, the pedals were just flying. I mean, it was just happening or the seats of the bikes were just you know going down when you are when you were on it and then the bikes were not ergonomic so imagine the cobblestones of berlin we were just you know our brains were just shaken what i was earning was okay for me as long as i was getting my money at the end of the month it was i think one euro more than the minimum wage in germany when i first started ten and a half euros per hour and it would be still okay for me maybe when I first started but I was not getting my money at the end of the month there were always some missing amounts and it was not only my case unfortunately it was the majority's case and in that case when you needed to reach out to the company for this problem then they were not responding mostly I remember emailing them five times and at the end, if they respond, then they say, okay, uh, next month, the following month, they were just going to uh, add that missing amount to our salary. But during that next month, there was another miscalculation. So we were never actually getting our full money from Gorillas. Okay, so before all these strikes and workers' council elections, etc., we were a bunch of workers meeting every Sunday and talk, we were meet, talking about the problems at the warehouse. We were not thinking about forming, establishing a workers' council or preparing protests, etc. Our main goal was to inform other colleagues because we were aware that most of the people, most of the workers are migrants and as we don't speak German, we don't know about the German law. So if there was a problem with the shift, for example, we were not even aware that it was an actual problem. Or uh, if we were, for example, uh, working on Sundays, we were not aware that that was not something to get extra money for. So we decided to write short articles about German labor law. What is a right of a worker, about the workers' rights and we were organizing social gatherings. So we wanted to get to know each other because we were actually suffering from the same problems, but we, we just didn't want the other colleagues to feel alone, maybe. I remember the meeting when we were trying to come up with a name for ourselves because we know we wanted to be something, be an entity. We just wanted to call ourselves Gorillas Workers Collective. Yeah. <laughs> I got a call from a colleague of mine who said that somebody got fired in Checkpoint Charlie Warehouse. So I just wanted to go there to show our colleague that I was supporting them. And you know, I just wanted to be there to show some to show my support somehow. And on my way I was calling other colleagues, some friends from some organizations or unions, and some journalists. And then I, then when I arrived there, we talked to the managers. We asked about the reasons why our friend got fired. 
they, there were no explanation about it and then we asked them to rehire our friend if there is no explanation, if there is no reason why they fired our colleague. And at the end, I also don't remember how it happened, but we were talking to our colleagues about doing something. And then we said, okay, maybe we are just going to block the warehouse. And then I remember talking to the managers and telling them that, okay, we are going to block this warehouse if you don't rehire our friends. As we realized that the company was scared of us and we had some success, so we found their weak side. So we told them that if they don't rehire Santiago, our colleague, then we were just going to block another warehouse which was close by. So we waited in front of Checkpoint Charlie warehouse for like three hours, I think, and then we went to a close by warehouse to do the very same thing. But they knew that we were going there, so they had already closed the warehouse before we arrived there. And then as the managers were still there, we talked to them and we kind of threatened them. We told them that they have 24 hours to rehire Santiago. Otherwise, we were just going to the busiest warehouse of Berlin the very next day, which we did. The next day we were in Prenzlauerberg and we blocked the warehouse in Prenzlauerberg. On our third day, we didn't tell them that we were going to block a warehouse. We even didn't know that we were going to block a warehouse. Just a few hours before we blocked the Kreuzberg warehouse on our uh, third day, we decided that, okay, we can do such a thing. And then we just went to the Kreuzberg warehouse and we blocked the warehouse. During the first three days of our strikes, our main goal uh, was to save our fired colleague. But then we also saw that we were successful. We were like, okay, uh, Santiago got fired. This started something, but our problems are much bigger than that. We were asking them to pay us in time. We were asking them to provide baskets for the bikes. We were asking them for proper bicycles or personal helmets or winter jackets. Uh, at the beginning of the strikes, it was mostly uh, GWC people, members, I don't know how to call us, uh, <laughs> who were initiating the strikes. But later on, it was not only GWC, workers were initiating solo strikes by themselves because all of us saw the power of the workers and the fact that the company was afraid of us. So it just happened. G GWC initiated things, but then it just, you know, expanded. The CEO of Gorillas was planning to have a bike tour with the other uh, CEOs of other companies. And that day when they were planning to do that, we had a protest in front of the headquarters because it was a day after the pay, pay day and we had a lot of missing amounts. And that day we gave our CEO the demand of Gorillas workers and we gave them 15 days to meet the demands, which was possible. So at the end, we decided that if they don't meet our demands, we will just take their bike tour idea and we will make a bike tour in our way. So in our way, it was like we were going to a warehouse with our bikes. We were blocking them, getting more people, cycling to another warehouse. And it was a nice bike tour, actually. And also we had a noise demo because uh, we had realized that the more we make noise, the more the company was listening to us. So we were using humor as well. So we were just you know, attacking company every way we could have done <laughs> as a collector. As GWC, we used to meet every week on Sundays and the number of people in our group was increasing. So each Sunday, when we were meeting, we were spending maybe seven hours, maybe eight hours, and trying to keep the momentum and making decisions. So in those meetings, actually, we were coming up with those ideas about striking, protesting, talking to the managers, writing an article or sharing some things on t Twitter or on Instagram. By the way, we were using social media quite effectively and I think it also helped us a lot. At the very beginning, when we were just meeting with our colleagues 
as Gorillas Workers Collective, etc. We were actually uh, planning to get help from unions and we asked unions to help us. They didn't help us at the beginning. When we became popular, I remember during our bike tour, one uh, union member told me that they want to help us. More than help, they said they want to control us, for example, but we had already managed it. It was a disappointment the very first time when we were nothing and when unions didn't want to help us. Because imagine like you're a bunch of workers trying to do something, trying to learn about your rights, and then you go to unions and then they say no. Uh, but then we just helped out each other. I mean, we just educated each other and we became something. I'm not saying that unions were not uh, beneficial at all because we needed them at one point. As you know, the politicians and union members also, they were always advising us to establish a works council. They were saying that, okay, what case strikes are not legal, you need to establish a workers' council. Uh, and we were on the way to establish a workers' council. And at that point, we really needed the unions because imagine for months, you are always doing white cat strikes, demos. In different ways, you show your reaction and you shut out the problems. And everybody, like the authorities tell you that, okay, you need to establish a workers' council. And then you establish a workers' council at the end. Yes, if you have a workers' council, then you can demand things from the company and they sh the company shouldn't say no, but they were simply saying no. And if they say no, what are you going to do as a workers' council? You are going to sue them because they say no, and then maybe after months you will get something. It's, it was not as practical as Wildcat Strikes, I can say. I think the Gorillas workers' protests and strikes were success because after what happened at Gorillas, the other delivery companies' workers also started doing something. Moreover, right now, few fired workers of Gorillas are challenging this white cat strike law or expert opinion in Germany. So imagine if we change something, we created a political discourse about it. We didn't create it, but we raised it again after 50 years. And to be very honest, I can say that I think those people who did the protests and strikes 50 years ago, I think they opened the way for us. And that's why I feel like those people are my strike-wise grandparents. Our strikes didn't, was, didn't end by police force. It ended maybe, but there was no force, there was no violence in it, and it lasted for months. There is a big difference. Thanks to them, this one is different, and maybe thanks to us, the next ones will be different. Sometimes I think about it and I am actually surprised how, what kind of an energy was that, that, you know, I was able to do everything. Maybe it was the energy of solidarity somehow that motivated all of us. The fact that it is appreciated makes my day every day, but it was hard, yeah.